Hello SG Beers, I'm Companion Wolf, aka Rob Wolf on Facebook. Welcome to another tutorial in the Smile Game Builder tutorial series and the first one of the new year. In this tutorial we'll explore one of the newest and very very useful features, player direction, which I showcased in the previous tutorial. In other words, do something based on the direction the player is facing and that means we'll revisit the compass HUD from tutorial 9 pictures where we can set the compass points up properly more on that later and in the meantime here's the intro The way player direction works is each direction is assigned a number. Smilebloom has set the numbers based on the north, south, west, east cardinal points on the compass. I prefer using north, east, south, west, and I assumed almost everyone else did, but when it didn't work the way it was supposed to, it threw me for a loop for a moment, and then I realised what was going on when I used the debug window to ascertain these numbers. So, north or up equals zero, East or right equals 3, south or down equals 1, and west or left equals 2. To set up the player direction, you'll need to store it in a variable, which is under the advanced variable options. Once we've done that, this will return a number for each direction we can then use conditional branches to determine which direction the player is facing. So the first thing we'll use this for is chests. If the player is not facing the front of the chest, it won't open and a message will appear. We'll be using the chest in the house for this. And we can use the display mode to its full advantage by selecting all and then cutting it. So, first thing, we'll create a new variable, number 15, player dir, for the player direction. We set up a conditional branch variable 15 and set the value to 2 which is the number for west or left. You might find it easier to switch between the two modes for this but you can paste you can cross paste it doesn't matter which method you use it'll it'll eventually It'll do the same thing. As a basic rule of thumb, for conditional branches in the event contents, you have the variable box check which equals yes, and if the conditions do not apply, that equals no. It doesn't matter what method you choose, whether it's one or the other or a combination of both. As time goes on, I really think you'll find yourself using the event contents more often, especially for that multi-copy and paste option and for some of the more complex events that you may create. So now looking at the flowchart, it'll be just as we expected. The player is or will be facing in direction 2, i.e. west and facing the chest front. It'll go through the routine as normal and then activate the switch at the end of it to go to page 2. And We should add a message under no um, just basically saying Open the chest from the front. A final look at the event contents and yes, there it is. So if we play test it, it 
and then we try to open it from the side tells you to open it from the front and we go opening from front we get the items you can do the same thing for signposts in this case I've already set one up but it's in the desert town This is it. Assign the player direction to 15. If the player is facing up, in this case 0, it'll say welcome to the desert town. If not, read the sign from the front. Pretty simple really. And what about doors? In my earlier tutorial showcasing the preset events, doors opened, shall we say, temperamentally. They relied on the transfer player method rather than actually a dynamic way of moving through the doors. Now, with the player direction, you can open the door and move through more realistically and more efficiently. We would create a door as normal and then in the advanced options we have three sheets. On the first one the event switch is set to local off and then we add an advanced variable set to our player direction and then we would we can keep the sound effects but we can cut that or delete it because we won't be needing it and then of course ah uh, no wrong one and then of course we need to turn the local switch on like so so on the second event sheet the local switch turned on and the variable box set to our player direction would be 3 because that would be facing right this would be triggered one time automatically we can actually do this one of two ways we can basically use the default teleport to jump to the right or the left of the map so if the player would be facing this way and we open the door be teleported to the right and vice versa facing left we teleported to the left of the door. We're not going to do that. Instead, we will do something else. Um, we can change the door graphic. can change it to open and then make the player walk two spaces to the right in the pass through events and we can copy this and paste it but set it to close Turn a local switch off. And that's it. For the second sheet, or the third sheet, I should say, it's pretty much the same thing. 
but why did that okay um, but this time we'll walk two spaces to the left and that should be good oh and make sure that this one too is triggered automatically otherwise you'd have a tough time going through the door we will also need to set up the local event switch again so that you turn it on and the variable box for our player direction will be set to 2 for facing left and now we're ready to play test it to see what it looks like goes through the door like so pretty cool huh so as a result of the new player direction we can now set up the variable box to our player direction above that variable 14 is set to the camera settings mode 0 normal view and 1 is first person view so we do a variable box check to check the mode if it's 0 i.e. the normal view then this is pretty much from what is what was used from the previous tutorial and if it's not in first person but is equal to one instead i.e. you're in the uh, i.e. you're in the first person mode then we focus on the player direction so if it equals to north east and so on then what it'll do is it'll still display the images accordingly and if you want to see the whole thing this is why one of the reasons why I love this event details is because it actually makes it so much easier to just go through and check that everything is is okay instead of dragging and across and then sometimes you would miss things so as you can see that's it and so let's play test it So as you can see the map is set to first person view and we can start moving around and watch the compass HUD. Doesn't matter if we are strafing left or right, the player is still facing that way. We'll do it. So if we now switch to normal view, player direction will be reflected in the compass HUD. As always, this needs to be pasted on each map for the compass points to work in parallel. I th think I've done it on this one as well. Not sure. Yep. 
No, I haven't. Okay. It'll be just a simple matter of copying that. Yeah, that's it. What we'll do is we'll just delete that. Make sure it's still here. Compass HUD. And that should be good. You do that on each map to make sure that it would work properly. And that's it for player direction. I believe we may have run out of time anyway. If you found this tutorial useful, please be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. Or visit my Twitter, Facebook and the RPG Maker Times blog, or even all of them. And as always, comment any suggestions for future tutorials below, and I'll go through them and try to incorporate them into some of my later tutorials. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Until the next time.